Is it Superman? Is it a plane? No! It's a flock of birds created using this simple After Effects template rig. Hello and welcome to Stern Effects. My name is Eran and in this tutorial I'll share with you my recipe for adding nature to nature. Or in other words, creating a flock of birds that you can place on top of any landscape video to add some life and make it more interesting. There is a link below to download this After Effects project, so feel free to do it and use it in your own work. I also invite you to stick with me because I'll show you how I created this template and go through the settings and the limitations to make sure you'll get the best results out of it. Okay, let's start. So first, let's quickly go through the installation process. I'll switch to the Finder window, Explorer, if you're working on the Windows side. And over here, I have the birds template.zip. Double click on the zip file to expand it. If you're working on the Windows side, you'll need to right click on the zip file and then choose expand all. Inside this folder, you will have three files, the readme file with all the instructions. So you can go ahead and read them or you can just follow my lead. So first I want to install this animation preset inside the After Effects presets folder. Now you'll need version 2023 of After Effects or higher to work with those files. So I'll go to the applications folder here on the Mac. This is going to be the program files on the Windows side and then locate your After Effects installation. Here it is on my machine and then I'll select the presets folder and over here I need to install the file. And basically just drag and drop this bird.ffx to this folder. Now on my machine, I already have a folder that I've created for all of my personal presets. So I'm going to select the bird.ffx and drag and drop it to this folder. And this is it. Now I'll switch back to After Effects and make sure that in the Effects and Presets panel, I'll go to the Options and choose Refresh List. And this is going to refresh the list under the Animation Presets. You will see in my case under Stern Effects, here it is. Now, even if you are not placing it inside this specific folder, you should be able to just highlight the search box and type in the word bird. We can close the text preset and this is it. This is the one that we're going to start using. So to demonstrate how this works, I'll use this composition of a future city landscape. You can get a sense of how this is looking. I'll pause the playback for now, go to the beginning and make sure nothing is selected and then double click to apply the shape layer based preset. Now, unfortunately, After Effects can't remember the name of the layer. So I'll need to select the layer, press return to rename it, and I'll just name it bird. Now, this is already set up for you. So if you just want to start using it, you can click on the fill, change the color to something else. I'm going to go with a dark color. If you'll preview this comp, you can get a sense of how this looks. So we are going to use this silhouette of an eagle to create a flock of eagles, not to be confused with flock of seagulls, which is a band from the eighties. Anyhow, I'll pause the playback. I'll go back to the beginning. And now I can just press S to scale it if I like to a smaller size. So let's go with 20. And of course we can change our mind anytime. And then to animate it, I'm going to go to the effects and presets again, clear the search, and then open up the animation presets folder, drill down the behaviors, and if I want to do it manually, I'll use the drift over time behavior. So I'll double click to apply it to this layer, and then I can change the direction. So let's set it to negative 90, and then set the speed to, let's start with 100. And if I press spacebar to preview, we can see our bird is flying across the screen. Now, obviously we can move this layer. In my machine, I'm hiding the layer's boundary. So I'll go to view and enable show layer controls. This is going to help me to see what I'm doing. And then I'll press the period key few times to zoom in and take this bird, hold and press the spacebar key to get a temporary hand tool and then I'll place this image over here, then maybe zoom out just a touch 
And of course, we can also use the cursor keys to place it wherever we want. And then if I press spacebar again, you can see how this works. Now we can duplicate this layer a few times and create additional blurs. So I'll press Command D here on the Mac, Control D on the Windows side. And then what I can do is just move this layer, let's say over here. And I'm also going to click on the layer and drag to the left. And this is going to sample a different part of the animation. Now, if I want, I can scale this layer from the transform options over here, or I can just press S and scale it from the layer itself. So totally up to you. Then I can duplicate another one. Let's place this guy maybe over here. Press S to see the scale. And then we can lower it to let's say seven. And I want to remind you, you need to click and drag to the left to sample a different part of the animation. And you can do it as many times as you want. So I'll duplicate another instance. Then I'll hold down shift and with the cursor keys, I can just move it 10 pixels away from the other fellows. And if I need, I can scale it up or down as well as change its starting point. So the animation is going to look different. Then very important, go to the end, make sure to select all the duplicate copies and expand the end point. So they're not going to be gone at the end of this comp. Let's go back to the beginning and then fit our viewer and press spacebar to see how this works. Now, by all means, you can work like that, but if you want something more controllable, efficient, and easy to manage, you can use this bird as a particle source and then control the particle system instead of managing multiple copies. And this is exactly what I've created for you with the bird template project. So let me show you how it works and guide you through the pros and cons of this template. So I'll stop the preview and then I'll say goodbye to all the birds that we've created over here, as well as close the animation presets and maybe also click on the effects and presets to hide the content. I'll go back to the project panel and I'll double click to invoke the import dialog. From the birds template folder, I'll import this After Effects project template. Click open or import if you're working on the PC side and this is it. Now, just because I'm compulsive, I'll rename this folder. I'll take out the suffix and then I'll open it up. And inside this folder, we have two comps, which are the ones that you need to use. The first one, birds one, if I will double click on it, is based on the particle playground effect. And the second one is based on the particle world effect. And each one of these effects can offer you a different kind of look. So you can just play each one of them to see the default state. This is the particle world effect. And this is the particle playground. But to use it, you don't even need to be in these compositions. So I'll close them down and then switch to the future city comp that I showed you before. Let's go to the beginning and drag bird number one above the layer that we have over here. Now, if I'll just press play, you will see those birds flying across the screen. All right, I'll pause the playback and then I'll make sure that the properties panel is visible on screen because over here, you'll be able to modify all the essential properties of this composition. And by the way, you can also open this composition and have access to all the different information over here, which is going to make your life easier when you are working with the second version. So for now, I'm just going to close it up and just work from the properties panel. First, I can sample a different color. So I can either click on the color chip or just use the eyedropper to sample a darker color from the scene. Second thing is to, of course, change the size. So I'll change it to six in this case, and then I can change the position. So I want to take all of these birds and drag them to be higher above those buildings. And then of course I can change the speed. So let's make them fly a bit faster. And then of course you can also play with the radius or the spread. It will make sense in a moment when we are going to add more birds. But just to show you how this works, I'll play with those values. So for the time being, I'm just going to leave it more or less where it was. 
Then I'll go to the beginning and I can press spacebar and that's it. This is already working. Now by default, there is some sort of blurriness to those birds because usually they are far away in the distance, but you can decide how much you want to blur them. Maybe not at all, or maybe just some. So let's try three in this case. And then there's also a very useful flip option. So tick this if you want the birds to fly in the opposite direction. Again, let's go to the beginning and press spacebar to preview this comp. And this is how it looks. So if this is all you need, just drag and drop the comp and modify the settings. But if you want to have more control or maybe add more birds, then let me show you how to do it. For that, I'll switch to the waterfall composition. First, let me just play it for you. So you can see in this case, we want to add some nature for this nature. All right, so I'll pause the playback. I'll again drag and drop the birds one comp and we can already see the birds are flying across the screen. In this case, I think I want to make them smaller. So I'll change the size to six. I leave the color as is and I'll change the position. Maybe I'll lower them down, something like this. Now, if I want, I can also keyframe those properties. So at the beginning here, I can create a keyframe for the size and then I can go to the end and make them a bit bigger because the camera is pulling towards us. So maybe eight in this case. You need to be very modest with those values, so don't exaggerate. Let's change the speed, make them fly a bit faster, maybe 122, and then let's pause over here in the middle and maybe just scrub the timeline just to get a sense and see how this works. Now, let's say that instead of just five birds, we want more. So this is where you need to pay attention. Notice that if you want to edit the number, you need to edit it at the start. So if you hover on top of this one, you can see that I've actually made a note here. And this is due to the fact that we are using a particle system. So we are generating some particles at the beginning and then we stop emitting them. Unfortunately, there isn't any clever way that I know of to control this value. So the safest way to work here is just go to the beginning and then highlight this value and type in the number of birds you want. So in this case, I'll go with 10 birds. And then again, I'll press spacebar to preview how this looks. Now, because I'm adding more birds, I may need to go and change the spread or the radius. So I can play with both of those values. So something like this, I think will work nicely here. You can create your own version. I'll go to the beginning again and press spacebar to see how this looks. And if I need, I can add additional blurriness or maybe even flip them so they will fly in the opposite direction. So this is looking quite interesting, but let's say that we want to control the size of the birds. The particle playground effect is a bit limited when it comes to changing the variations, the size of each particle. So if you need this functionality, then you can try the second version, BIRDS2. And to demonstrate how this looks, I'll switch to this composition. First, I'll play it for you. And let's say that we want to have some birds flying. So this person, which looks like he's looking at something, will have something to look at. Okay, so I'll go to the beginning. This time, I'll drag BIRDS2. And I'll go to the middle of the comp just so I can see what I'm working with. First, let's change the color. I'll sample a color from his suit here and then click on the color and make it a little dimmer and less saturated, something like this. Then I want to change the position. Now, when it comes to modifying the second comp parameters, I highly recommend that you'll do it from the timeline instead of from this panel. And this is because here you have more control when you are scrubbing the values. This effect is using a different system, which is based on the comp width and height. So in other words, just change the values from here. For example, I'll click on the position Y and then drag it up. And then I'll change the size after calling your attention to the fact that each one of the birds here is a different size and this is a function of this effect. 
So let's just reduce it by half, so 0 0.5. And then we can also play with the speed. So if you want them to fly faster, you actually need to click and drag to the left. Let's test it and see how this works. You can see that we actually see the first bird before its time. And this means that we need to change the position X, move those flock of birds outside of the screen. So you can click and drag to the right. And again, the values here are moving quite fast. So be very gentle or add the command key while you are dragging. This will be the control key on the Windows side. And to preview it, just press spacebar and you can get a sense of how this looks. Now, when it comes to the number of birds, in this instance, your best bet is to just change the seed. So if I'll click and drag, you can see that I'm going to create a different amount of birds. Now, I can't be precise here because this is, again, based on particles. But to be honest, I think it doesn't matter how many birds, as long as you have something that you are happy with. So let's go with a seed of 10 in this case. And then I'll change the blurriness to 7 to make them a bit more faded. You also have a crowding option and you can control how closer the birds are to each other. So feel free to play with it, as well as a direction slider. So you can have those birds fly in a specific angle. But all in all, this is it. So I'll press spacebar again, and we can get a sense of how this looks. Now, I just want you to be aware that for both comps, birds one and two, you can't animate the position X and Y over time. And this is due to a limitation of the effect which is being used in this particle system. So if you do want to animate the position, you'll need to animate the transform of the layer. So you can create a keyframe over here. Let's go to the beginning. Let's say that this is going to be our first keyframe. And if you will want to make sure that they are leaving the screen, just create additional keyframe in the X position of the entire layer. So for the main transform, and this is going to help you sort this problem. All right, let me show you another example. I'll pause the playback. I'll switch to this composition where we have this robot taking his dog outside for a walk. So we'll need to make it a bit more natural. How about adding a flock of birds in the sky here? So let's go to the beginning. I'll do the same thing. I'll add bird number two. I'll move over here so I can see where they are. I'll change the size to 0 0.5. I'm also going to sample a different color. Let's go with something from the robot's body. I already know that I want to flip them. And for the position Y, again, I can start to drag from here. But as you can see, this is very sensitive, so I can't really control it instead. I'll open up the essential properties in the timeline and then I'll click and drag on the position Y from the timeline to give me a bit more control. So something like this and maybe I'll change the speed. And I think that I'm also going to press T and change the entire opacity of the layer to maybe 40%. Let's go to the beginning and press spacebar to see how this works. And obviously we need to hide those birds behind the buildings here. So to remedy this, I'll select the layer, press Command D or Control D to duplicate another copy. I'll bring this one above my bird layer, go to Effect, and then from the Keying category, I'll select the color range effect. I'll sample the color of the sky, and then using this plus, I'll sample more colors. And this should be enough to isolate just the parts above the birds. If you need, of course, you can return back to the birds comp and maybe add a bit more blurriness. Let's go with seven in this case and have a look at the result. And this is it. I hope this animation preset and template will help you with your project as well. And if it does, please feel free to tag me on all the socials at SternFX. Thank you so much for visiting my channel and I hope to see you soon in another video.